watching the World War II video in a Japanese classroom. Its very ordinariness is frightening. You've seen the American footage before countless times. The opening of the bomb bays on Dakotas or B-52s. The bombs dropping so thick they're like clouds of confetti. Falling on nameless factories and cities below like the first fat drops of rain onto dust. Little puffs billowing below. This time you see an image of Himeji Castle and in the Japanese commentary you hear the word Tegara, the suburb that you're in at this moment. And you realise that on July the 3rd, 1945, the eve of good old US Independence Day, those bombs were raining down right here. And the few survivors who are still alive in this millennium talk about how in one two-hour raid those bombers dropped their deadly cargo in a broad band from Himeji port to Kodera and 713 died and 10,000 were injured. And 63 years on, these old men and women still break down when they describe the bombs which were designed to explode into miniature balls of fire to burn wooden houses and the flesh of the mostly women and children who lived here because there were few men left. Bodies burned so black they looked like fallen charcoal statues. And you feel that familiar sense of futility when you realise once again that war doesn't discriminate between soldier and civilian between guilty and innocent. And you wonder at the enlightened decision of MacArthur and Roosevelt to spare culturally and historically significant structures like Himeji Castle and most of Kyoto and only incinerate expendable humans. Two weeks earlier, that bomb the military target of a fighter plane factory in Kiyoguchi. But now the target was a band of civilians a kilometre wide and 15 long. At 10pm, the Tegara Elementary School was flattened with no one inside. But many of its students at home nearby on their tatami mats and futons died anyway. Today is a day like any other. The sounds of birds drift in through open summer windows, along with the roar of a motorbike deliberately revving past the school. The Shinkansen that doesn't stop in Himeji rumbles past at breakneck speed across the six-storey overpass. Some of the students are unusually quiet. A few studious ones take notes. The boy at the back with the long spiky hair has lost interest and is passing notes to another boy. This black and white video is history. He hates history. 60 years may as well be 600 or 6,000. These people lived well before he was born or his parents. It's not his experience. I hope it never will be. His apathy doesn't even make me angry. I'm glad he lives in a society that tolerates a little rebellion. He won't be beaten for his spiky hair. He won't be shot for his defiant pink hair clip. The school itself is at the foot of Tegarayama. It's not much of a yama or mountain. Just a little hill, really. At the top of the hill is the giant concrete sword plunged into the earth in 1956, which says, We will never go to war again. History has rolled on. In the interim, a monorail has been constructed, 
has languished, has been deconstructed. The sword and historical peace centre have been joined by an aquarium, amusement park, botanical gardens, gym, athletics field and cultural centre. All the facilities that citizens in a contemporary city demand and enjoy. At the end of the video, the teacher, who herself has been particularly thoughtful, tells the unusually quiet class of 13-year-olds that she comes from Hiroshima. When she was a student, she heard many first-hand eyewitness accounts of the bomb and the war. Now those people's experience has died with them, but we must never forget. And no matter how depressed we may get, we should reject suicide. For life is precious.